So hello, and welcome to the video. I wanted to make a video about how I make videos. And in the process of writing this script, I realized I'm actually making two videos. The first, this one, will cover the equipment that I use in making videos. The second video will cover the software that I use and also the online resources that I tap into. I'll put a link to that second video as and when I release it next week. When I was starting up, I couldn't find a video that covered this territory exactly, so I hope it will be of interest to some of you. I know many of you are subscribed to see videos about shiny aeroplanes, so I'll try and make this as entertaining as I can, and hopefully you'll still enjoy seeing how I make those videos about shiny aeroplanes. So stick around! Hi, I'm Matt. Over the last 25 years, I've travelled a lot. I've lived in five countries on four continents. I've flown over 1.3 million miles. I've visited over a hundred countries, every American state, but I'm nowhere near done. So hit subscribe and perhaps you'll pick up some hacks, hints and tips to make your next trip better. This video will cover the equipment that I use and links to all of the items discussed will be included in the description below. These are Amazon affiliate links. So if you click on them and then go ahead and buy something, I'll earn a small commission which will help out the channel. So thanks in anticipation. So the first equipment you'll need is a camera, or two, or possibly three. My main camera is this, a DJI Osmo action camera. Not the action camera you might have expected me to be showing you, but it's the one that I use and I like it. The best known occupant of the action camera space is the GoPro, and that's what you'll see most people using. But I researched the space pretty thoroughly and ended up going for the less common choice. And there really are only two choices, the DJI and the GoPro. There are a few other competitors that look similar and are much cheaper, but they'll lack the features that you really do need for this kind of production. The GoPro was certainly the innovator in the space and was on generation eight when I was a buyer. But I watched a number of YouTube videos comparing the DJI with the GoPro, and many of them agreed that the GoPro had lost some of the advantage that it had gained from being a first mover, and perhaps was also taking advantage of its dominance by downscaling some of the features that it offered. Most notably, a front-facing screen was no longer standard on the GoPro, and you needed to buy a quite expensive accessory in order to get one, but it is quite an important thing for vlogging. Even with fewer features, the GoPro was the more expensive option. And I see that the Generation 9 now does have a front-facing screen again, although it is now at a significant premium to the DJI. From a technical perspective, both film in up to 4K with up to 60 frames per second with excellent motion stabilization, all of which is pretty essential for filming on the go. The reviews I watched did highlight some minor differences at the extreme end of the performance spectrum, but I judged that that wouldn't make a difference to me in everyday use, so I plumped for the cheaper and better features DJI Osmo Action Camera, and I am very happy that I did. It is remarkable that a gizmo this size can shoot in 4K at 60 frames per second, although I tend to record at 30 frames per second to preserve battery life, because I don't think you can really notice the difference. The lens has a remarkably wide field of vision, and as you're recording at 4,000 watt-nots, but high definition is only 1,000 watt-nots, you can zoom in quite a long way without losing the quality of your final output. This was a snippet I used in a recent video, and this was the original footage. So my second camera is my phone. This is a Xiaomi Mi 9, which is a phone you've probably never heard of, but it's great. I'm not easily swayed by reputations, so I tend to avoid phones that are more brand than product. I'm looking at you, Apple, in this regard, but I'll talk more about the Apple universe in my video on software. This Xiaomi phone offered everything that I need from a phone for about half the price of some of the more recognized brands, and I've been very happy with it. It also records in 4K at 60 frames per second. The rear-facing camera is only 1080p at 30 frames a second, but that's plenty for a YouTube video, as you generally don't need to zoom in as you're so close to the camera when you take the recording. It really is a fantastic camera, and you can use it to make telephone calls too. I do have a third camera that I can call upon in emergencies, which is my Nikon D90. 
This is a superb SLR camera that has been by my side for about 15 years now. But being that old, it can only record at 720 watt-nots, which really isn't enough for videos these days. It'll work in an emergency. And although I've not needed a third camera on any of the trips I've documented so far, I can see circumstances where I would need one. So although I love this camera, I may need to upgrade it in due course to one with a better video capability. Having said that, my phone's still capabilities are also outstanding, so it would have to be a pretty special piece of kit to make it worth lugging around. So that's the camera. A great piece of kit, but not much use on its own. You could balance it for recording, but it comes with a frame which makes it waterproof, although that's a function that I've not felt confident testing because it's quite an expensive piece of kit. That frame does also add this anchor point which I will note is the same on the DJI as it is on the GoPro, so the accessories are interchangeable. The first thing you'll need is probably a tripod. Mine costs £23 and does the job, although it is still primarily made of plastic, so it does have some flex. But that's been the case with several tripods I've owned over the years, and you do need to spend quite a lot more to get a truly professional tripod, but this does the job in the circumstances. A tripod isn't super convenient when you're wandering around an airport, so you do need some extra gizmos, and this is where it can get fun. I spent £22 on a 50-piece gizmo kit. The highlights of that kit are a travel tripod with flexible legs. You can use this as a traditional tripod, but you can also wrap the legs around things so that you can attach it to chairs or trees or whatever. Very handy, and I also use it for selfie filming too. And a clip. This is probably the gizmo I use the most because it is very easy to attach to my backpack. Alongside the image stabilization, this gives me very, very good quality images when I'm on the go. And if you don't get it perfectly horizontal, it's very easy to fix in editing. And I will also use this for selfie filming too, because it's quite handy. The pack also contained a window anchor too, a very good piece of kit for sticking onto airplane windows. The downside here is that it lacks an axis to allow you to change the framing of the shot out of the window. So I have since spent £12 on an additional window anchor that has that additional axis, which will be very helpful as and when I'm able to get on an aeroplane again. There is also equipment for anchoring your camera to things like a bike or the outside of a car. Very, very useful. Not used it yet, but I imagine that I will. And a floaty handle, which will stop your camera sinking if you take it in water. And also a traditional selfie stick, if that's your thing. The kit also includes some less practical equipment, such as this headpiece. You'd get some great footage from this angle, probably better than you get from your chest, but walking around an airport like this would make you look like a complete plonker, and it's not exactly discreet either. More discreet, but a touch inconvenient, is this chest attachment, which I think would be very useful as it is completely hands-free, although I've not had reason to use it yet myself. There's a wrist strap for mountain biking or skydiving. Hello. And finally this one. Not found a use for it yet, but I'm sure there is one. Which reminds me, I must renew my membership to the Institute of Chartered Accountants. And the pack also contains a number of clips and locks and stickers and things to make it up to 50 pieces, all of which come in a nice carrying case. And it was a very good investment that I've been quite happy with. So to sound, one weakness of both the DJI and the GoPro is the quality of the inbuilt microphone. This is perfectly adequate for general filming, particularly on airplanes where there's lots of background noises, but isn't really good enough for conditions such as this. So you really need an external microphone. I paid 23 pounds for this Lavalier mic. Lavalier is just a pretentious word for lapel. I have moderate to severe hearing loss, as I've mentioned before, so the whole area of audio quality is a little bit of a mystery to me, but I think it works well and I've had no complaints. I have tried recording audio into my laptop, into the DJI and also into my phone, and my phone is by far the best of the three, so I always take my audio into this. Some people go to great lengths to baffle the environment that they're recording in, putting down soft furnishings all around them. I don't bother with that, and it seems to work okay. 
One quick tip when recording audio into a different device to your camera is that you'll need to line up the audio tracks later. Hence the Hollywood clacker. Make a loud noise, or even better, two, and that will allow you to line up the audio tracks. Clapping, of course, also works. The last equipment you'll probably need is lighting. Without lights, my office setup really doesn't work. But with lights, my setup works well. I spent £40 on a three-piece SD lighting kit which I have crammed into my office. Two of those lights came with umbrella diffusers, but it's quite large and it didn't really fit in my office, so I don't use them and I don't think it makes much of a difference. So overall I've spent £420 on equipment, which includes the camera, plus also a couple of memory cards and a spare battery for when I'm travelling. You'll obviously also need a computer to process the videos taken, and unless you have an extraordinary hard drive, you'll also quite quickly need an external storage device. Those 4G video files are very large. I bought this 5 terabyte external unit for £96, which is about 30% full after making 25 videos, so it'll last me a fair while yet. So that's the equipment that I use. I hope it's been interesting to see behind the scenes and I am really champing at the bit to get back on the road to get value out of the investment that I've made. As I record today, it's the first day of England's latest lockdown, which I think is an essential step in allowing the vaccines time to get this virus back in its box. So thanks for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it or got something out of it. Please subscribe if you're new and leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. And I'll see you all again next week for the second part of this video, which will cover the software and online resources that I use. Goodbye. The kit also includes some less practical stuff, such as this headpiece. <laughs>